Hey, it's Peter Myers with Master Your Money Academy. Happy Financial Freedom Friday. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Friday. I am so glad to be joined here with you as we talk about uh, avoiding the debt trap and the candy bar madness that we've been talking about all week. However, I um, also want to recognize that today is the five-year anniversary of the Supreme Court recognizing uh, gay marriage in America. So it, I feel that it would be really unjust to um, not mention that, especially um, with everything going on in the world, talking about uh, last week was closing the racial gap um, in wealth and um, definitely recognizing LGBTQ rights in America and their right to be married because I definitely believe in equality for all. It doesn't matter uh, who you are on the outside. It matters what you are um, in your heart and on your inside. So it would be really unjust to not recognize that um, five years ago today uh, in the state of New York and by the Supreme Court uh, ruled that gay marriage is the law of the United States of America. So happy Pride Month. I'm definitely celebrating with you um, those rights. And I know as a country, we have a long way to go um, on equality. So just with um, Virginia passing the Equal Rights Act just in the last few months. Um, so still a lot of opportunity to grow. Uh, but today I really wanna dive in and continue the conversation on Candy Bar Madness. So hopefully you joined me on Master Your Money Academy on Wednesday for Wealth Wednesday. And I told you what we were up to in Master Your Money Academy with students. Uh, we've been talking about Candy Bar Madness. Yesterday I had an awesome opportunity to um, be joined with Swag Camp um, and really work with middle school kids. So we even had Candy Bar Madness with them and it was such a fun opportunity, really diving in um, to talk about candy and how it relates to our money. So um, as you probably saw in the description, 40% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So that's me, that's probably you, that's why you're tuning in, that's why you're here. Definitely. So like, if you totally relate to this, give me a heart because you feel like the pain of like, oh my gosh, you don't know where my money's coming from. I don't know how I'm going to survive because I'm right there with you. Like I feel it when I'm like, holy shit, how am I going to pay apartment rent? Or, uh, yeah, I went over the budget. So like, this is the last week of June and especially in Master Your Money Academy, we are working on our budgets right now, uh, at the end of the month and setting up July. So we've been talking about debt, like what happens like when I really can't make the payments because debt doesn't go away. So filing for bankruptcy, filing for foreclosure, which is like we absolutely don't want to be doing, uh, your debt is still has to be paid. The minimum payment is still there. So about two, three weeks ago, we talked about the debt snowball versus debt avalanche and Essentially, none of that can really happen if we are in like the candy bar madness of a jawbreaker or a dum dum. And if you remember from Wednesday's um, Wealth Wednesday episode, talked about how the uh, majority of us are in that like dum dum jawbreaker uh, group, and that's seventy percent of America that's living paycheck to paycheck, forty thousand dollars in annual income or less. That's me. That's probably you. That's most of us. But in reality, that's not where we want to be, which totally get that. So I'm not here to like say that we're all going to be millionaires. Um, as you saw, like with payday candy bar, probably not going to happen. Like most of us aren't going to have payday candy bars. Totally okay. However, we still get to live a rich life and we still get to be smart with our money, hence the smarties. So we want to be debt free. We want to have opportunity. We want to live a rich life. And to me, rich life is living in opportunity. It's living in abundance. It's being able to have that money. And it's a mindset. It's challenging for all of us. I mean, I struggle with it uh, because I struggle with seeing that there's an opportunity cost for every decision that I make. I get to choose whether or not to invest. I get to choose I mean, honestly, I'm, I choose to live debt free, but that comes at a cost as well because I miss out on other opportunities. So I get that absolutely because I do live the debt free, but I also live the paycheck to paycheck because I don't 
uh, want to have the debt. And it, th there's no right or wrong to it. Uh, it it's all how you want to uh, look at it. But I definitely want to talk about how do we even like avoid the debt trap? How do we um, get out of this? Because if you think about it, we haven't necessarily always had like this concept of debt per se. We've had this concept of borrowing money. And we, if you look at like history, we've always bartered. And a really good example that I actually gave to the middle schoolers yesterday, uh, which like totally blew my mind, they like got this. And if you think about it, like, okay, middle school kids getting the concept of debt, like, why does like half of America not? Uh, <laughs> was kind of my first thought. So um, I broke it down to them of, uh, okay, so I'm a math teacher and think about like how many kids come in and like take their math tests and homework and they don't have a pencil. So this is the greatest way I like to explain this. So, okay, so you're basically need a pencil to do your math. And you have like choices in pencils too, right? So how many of us like the number two pencil? If you like the number two pencil, like you can give me a heart, you can give me a like, put it in the comments. Like, uh, um, but like you probably went and asked your mom for like the fancy mechanical pencil. Um, another great example is like how many people want coloring in red like on their uh or not coloring in red grading in red <laughs> you definitely don't want me to color your papers in red um or most of you don't i mean if you do totally fine uh but most don't most like the colors and we talked about like the needs versus the wants aspect of it so like there's not a need aspect of like it has to be colorful and a need aspect of like having a mechanical pencil you really like need just the basic number two pencil or the like cheapo red pen or whatever from the 99 cent store. And what I was conveying to them is that there's opportunity costs. We have to determine is it in our budget um, or are we willing to like put ourselves into debt over it per se. And um, what was really amazing is when uh, talking to them, like kind of the basic concept of collateral so um, yes, collateral is like kind of a complex term in the sense of it's what we give people to like be able to borrow. So for example, like your homes, uh, most of us have a home mortgage and we our collateral on our home is obviously the home. We don't theoretically own the home until it's all paid off in cash. The bank owns the home. But at the same time, remember, the bank is not in the business to own homes. Like the bank does not want your home. Like that, they're gonna be like, what the hell do I do with it now, um, basically. So remember that at the same time, like yes, there's collateral for borrowing money, but they absolutely do not wanna own your home. So <laughs> make your payments on time because the bank is not gonna be happy if they take over your home because they're like, oh shit, now what do I do with it? Um, they're not realtors, they're not like homeowners. They're gonna have no idea what to do with your home. They don't want it. So um, that's where I come in to help you <laughs> Um, keep your assets, like, whether it be your home, whether it be your car. Um, and I always joke with people like keep your assets because basically it's like, you want to keep your ass in the seat, uh, <laughs> to be funny about it. So like, don't really want the fire under your ass where you're like, oh shit, how am I going to make the payment? Um, kind of thing. So, but anyway, where I was going with the pencils and the jacket is the kids telling me like, yeah, like, uh, one of them was like, oh, my art teacher like makes us put um, our jacket or like our phone um, to, as like a depository to essentially uh, get the pencil back. Because when you think about it, like, especially in high, so I teach high school and this works really well because I will tell you, high school kids are not gonna leave the classroom without their phone, their keys or their driver's license. So what am I doing? I'm collecting collateral to ensure that these kids don't get in debt, right? Because What's gonna happen, like, if you left your keys or phone with me, well, then you have to go buy another phone or keys. Because, like, especially if it's, like, on a Friday, for example, and a lot of math teachers do test on Fridays. So when you think about it, like, if you left your phone or keys, you're gonna be like, oh, shit, like, I don't have my keys or my phone. Well, A, you probably won't make it home <laughs> if you don't have your keys. But B, like, with your phone, I get your phone for the whole weekend until you bring your, the pencil back on Monday. And most kids won't. So I'm like, well, I'm not made of money here, right? Kind of thing. Um, so that's where interest starts coming in. Because I'll be like, um, if you want your phone back or your keys, I want some interest because I want the pencil back. 
And that's basically like how the banks operate. They're like, oh, I want the money back. Um, they're not in the business to take your home. They just want you to pay the money back because a bank is all about money. They don't care about whatever. Well, I mean, I guess they in somewhat care about the assets you have. Uh, but that's basically what they're like um, operating off of is, but the majority of the Americans fall in the group of living that paycheck to paycheck. They don't know where their income is coming from and they have no idea what their expenses are. And that's where we get into deep shit. Uh, that's where we have candy bar madness going on. Our jaws are wide open. We have no idea where our money is going to come from. And ultimately m most of us don't even know like what is credit. So um, it, it's a really interesting concept. And if you have an idea what credit is, I would love to like hear in the comments um, because I think it's interesting. How do we interpret credit? What do we think credit really is? Um, and what does it do? So if you have an idea, um, I would love to just hear it on the comments. I think it's always interesting uh, how people in society perceive credit. Uh, because I definitely want to debunk that um, right off the bat. So credit is just is merely a tool to buy something now and pay for it later. So it's the borrowing of money. When you borrow money on credit, you get a loan. So credit and loan are not the same thing. Credit and debt is not the same thing. Um, and that's where a lot of us get really confused on that aspect. We look at credit being bad. So uh, I want to say like credit's not bad, credit's not good. Credit is actually neither. Because again, credit is merely the tool to buy something now and pay for it later. The credit is not the debt, the credit is not the loan, okay? So that's a common, common misconception because there are many reasons why people borrow money and save paying cash. So can you think of any ideas? Like what are maybe some products that you use that had credit backed behind it. So think about, I gave you the example just recently of um, iPhone. So absolutely, cr like Apple took out credit, took a loan to find the new iPhone or when they established that. So it was a basically using a tool to mass produce iPhones now, knowing the money stream is going to come in later. Well, that's where a lot of us uh, kind of get hit with the debt concept. Because Apple is, yes, taking on debt because they may not have the capacity right now to pay for it, but they have a plan. So it's the plan of, I know I can forecast out maybe in five, six months, I'm gonna profit from whatever iPhone or whatever they are selling to mass consumers, and then I'm gonna make my money back and be able to pay it off. And that's where a lot of us don't necessarily think about is, how am I gonna pay the credit back? So we think of credit cards as a piece of plastic. So, but people don't necessarily know what that means. I've walked into, because I teach high school, and I've walked into classrooms, and kids have no idea what does it mean to have a credit card. So a credit card is not the same as a debit card. Uh, they both look like pieces of plastic. I get that. However, the debit card is there as a convenience, because how many of us like carry around cash in our wallets? I don't really carry around that much cash in my wallet. It's kind of just a inconvenience, honestly, right? Um, because to go to the ATM all the time and like your banks may charge withdrawal fees if you're not uh, banking at them. So like I bank with Wells Fargo, for example, if I went to Bank of America ATM, I'm gonna get like dinged out um, for pulling out the cash. So most of us like don't. So we have debit cards or we have credit cards. Well, the debit card is basically cash, okay? So it's directly coming out of your bank account, whether it be checking or savings. So you have to have the cash in the account, otherwise you get hit with an overdraft fee. So there's a significant overdraft fee if you don't have the money in the account. Versus a credit card is also a piece of plastic, yes, but people don't realize it's a loan, okay? 
So there is a like time period. So think about like your house or your car. Houses have like usually 15 to 15 or like 30 year term limits. Uh, and they accrue like interest every month as well because you have a monthly payment versus a credit card term is actually just one month. They're not loaning you the money for 15 or 30 years. I mean, yes, the credit card companies are in the business of actually making money off of you. Um, so when you go over that like 30 days is when they're making money because they're making interest payments. And what happens though is how do we get in debt? Well, we start paying interest on interest. So let's say I uh, purchase something. I don't know. You can drop this in the comments. Like, what's your like favorite item you want to buy? Um, give me an example uh, if anyone wants to join it. And I guess I can look and see who is watching with this. Um, yeah. Hi, Elena. Hi, Jan Marie. You want to give me an example? Um, I know you talked about. You said number two pencils. We can use that. Or if you have another item you want to like purchase, and we'll just run with it. So what's something like you're, I don't know, you're saving up for, I know Jane Marie, you're in Master Your Money Academy. What's your like big goal uh, that you want to save up for? And we can kind of play with that as an example. So pause a second, see if anyone, let's see. Okay, car, awesome, awesome. Um, so yes, let's definitely um, use a car as a great example. So um, I don't know, what is the like car dollar amount um, that we're saving for? You can just like hypothetically give me a number if, or your dream car. I, I seem to remember, Jane Marie, you said a new used minivan. Yes, you're gonna be the new um, cool mom on the door. Like you get to push the little buttons. Uh, my mom always loved it. She just came into like the carpool lanes, pushed the button uh, and she drove a green minivan by the way. Uh, <laughs> when picking up an elementary. So you saw this minivan coming down the street and she thought she was the coolest person because like um, elementary school, you like push the little buttons, like you don't even have to pull the door handle, you know? Um, and the kids all pile in and then we're off to like soccer practice or whatever. So uh, shout out to all the like moms out there who like drove me to like every practice or whatever and their fancy minivan. And then obviously you get to middle school and you're like, Mom, please don't pick me up from football practice in your minivan. Yeah. Um, so mom upgraded to a Highlander, by the way, um, because we were like, oh, I don't want to be seen in a big green minivan. But I totally feel you for all the moms out there who love to drive minivans. Oh, and I should say dads too, because you know, like daddy's daycare. Um, that, that was really stereotypical of me. Daddy's daycare, um, minivan too. Um, absolutely. So all the cool moms and dads or whatever um, <laughs> drive the minivan. So anyway, okay, so Jan Marie says like minivan's like $20,000. Great. So let's talk about this car here. Uh, we, how many of us like have the cash to just buy a $20,000 minivan right now? Probably not, right? Like I don't. Um, yeah, hooray for, <laughs> hooray for dad too, yeah. <laughs> so whether like football practice yeah usually dad actually took me uh to football practice because you know i didn't want to be seen in the minivan um so shout out to dad too um and then mom usually picked me up <laughs> and uh, yes i was stinky so like the you know like the minivans they become really stinky and um, have goldfish like all over the floor uh but anyway <laughs> so yes absolutely you will soon have that minivan so but let's talk about it because do we have the cash for it right now Probably not, right? So how are we going to buy that minivan? Well, we have to look at, is it in our budget, right? So I have this really like fun acronym of like, how do we look at whether or not it's in our budget? And I call it being a shrewd borrower. So if you want this like awesome acronym um, and resources, definitely hit me up, um, get on my email list and I will totally email it out to you. Because uh, it's a really, really fun acronym, <laughs> and I, I don't know, I think I'm clever because I came up with it. Um, so anyway, it basically says, are you, is this a sincere need or want? Like, do I truly need it? So Jan Marie, I know you have a couple kids. I don't remember, like, how many, but we'll go with it. Like, yeah, you probably need a, <laughs> probably need a minivan um, to, care, to get the kids everywhere, picking up from school, all of their, like, sports activities, right? Um, so versus... 
like myself, I'm a single guy. Do I need a minivan? Mm, probably not, unless I want to be like in the Uber business or um, driving all my friends around. <laughs> so um, I probably don't right now. But like Jan Marie, like yes, like you have kids, uh, five kids. Oh yeah, five kids. Absolutely, you need the minivan um, because you're probably taking other kids <laughs> to practice and school as well. So yeah, absolutely, you need the minivan here. So okay. So our next question though is like. Sincere need or one? Need a vehicle for seven people. Yeah, seven. Yeah, seven people are fit in a minivan. Definitely. So perfect. Okay. So then next we have to say this is a sincere need or one. So we've determined that this minivan is an absolute need for Jan Marie. So Jan Marie, are you happy to pay twenty thousand dollars right now for it? Mm, I don't know. Right. Like, is 20000 who just has $20,000 sitting around to pay for it? Probably not. So, okay, so now we have to look at it as, well, how can we spread out this $20,000 car payment, right? So, we're not happy to pay $20,000 right now. That's like, no, like, if you win the lottery, yeah. Jan Marie says, um, <laughs> right. Um, who has that <laughs> laying around? So, we look get to look at now, like, how do we break this out? and most of us finance our car for X number of um, years. And I guess I should have looked it up. I don't know how many I like finance mine for, um, which is like a really bad for me to say as a financial coach that I don't know how long it's being financed for. Um, so highly encourage you to like look that up. You might want to know how long you're financing your car for, uh, for sure. And definitely, by the way, we I encourage you to do this, like especially if you're in my uh, coaching group, because you kind of need to know like, how long am I going to be paying the debt on this? Um, so yeah, definitely look that up. I should have done that myself to give you an example. Um, but anyway, I don't know. Let's say it's like the next five years or whatever. So uh, because it's easy math, <laughs> the 20,000 divided by five gets you what? So um, someone can put that in the comments. Um, I'm really bad at mental math, by the way. Uh, but I, just, or, I don't know. Uh, if you feel like doing math, I, yes, I can do math, by the way. That, that was a bad comment. Uh, you probably don't, you don't want me being a math teacher if I can't do math in my head. Uh, so yes, I can do the math, but if you want to give me the, the, give it to me in the comments, so that way I'll keep going here. Um, so let's say 20,000 divided by like five years. Um, uh, and then you would like divide it by, obviously there's 12 months in the year. So then you have to further divide by 12. Um, uh, and that aspect is what I can't do in my head. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So let's say, I don't know, do we have a dollar amount or should I just like hypothetically go with something? Anyone want to like let me know what the dollar amount is? So twenty thousand divided by five years divided by twelve months. Should we quickly do this on a calculator? Otherwise, I'm like going to give you a hypothetical number, which is always a bad idea, by the way. Like, don't do hypothetical numbers, especially when you're a math teacher. It really confuses the kids. They're like, "Wait, where did you get this number, Mr. Myers?" I'm like, mm, "I just kind of made it up." Okay, so it's four thousand divided by twelve. So like at $333, yeah, which is about average what I pay um, in a car payment. So perfect. So $330 um, per month. So basically, now we're on step three. Is there room in my monthly budget for that? Do I have $333 to pay? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So... Our question here is, do we, do we not? So typically we have a monthly minimum payment um, to make. Yep, 330 a month. Perfect, thanks, Jean Marie. So typically there's like a monthly payment and I wanna say my monthly payment is 150. So we'll go with that, okay? So um, you can be looking at like $150 if that room in there um, to pay. So, but that's recognizing if I'm only going to pay the minimum of $150, I am now like thinking about, okay, well, there's pop, there's like an extra like layer to that. So theoretically, like I should probably be paying $330 to break this out like nicely. However, how does the bank make their money? The bank makes their money by charging interest. So to charge that interest, well, yeah, they're going to lower the minimum, like lower the amount you should be paying to the minimum. 
So basically, you should be paying 330 but they may say, oh, just pay us 150 and we'll stack, tack on an interest rate and let's make some money because that's what we want to do as a car dealership or whatever. Right. Yeah, absolutely, Jane Marie. Interest. So interest is what hits us. So next step, we get to E, extra costs. Are we willing to take on the interest? Is it worth it? Well, Jane Marie has needs a car for seven people, right? And you probably need the car right now. So we get to look at, okay, well, we've said the car is a sincere need already. So are we willing to take on the interest or do we really need to like work with our budget here and get it to $330? So I don't know, is that in your budget? Because don't forget, we have housing costs, we have food costs, we have clothing. Um, I mean, it's not really acceptable to walk around naked in society. Um, so we have to put clothes on. That is a want, or I'm sorry, the need. The want is like the high-end clothes. So you can buy like cheaper clothes. Uh, but anyway, so you have to look at that. And then the next aspect is the waiting cost. Like, okay, there is a opportunity cost, just like I said, of people like the debt-free versus like carrying debt. So I can decide, well, okay, do I want to wait until I have the full cash? Like, okay, so think about it. If I just said on average that the average American uh, single person makes $40,000 a year and as a couple um, to double that. So I know Jane Marie is married. So it'd be like on average is $80,000. And you may make more, you may make less. I don't know. Uh, so we'll, we'll just go like hypothetically. So that's like eighty thousand so, uh, dollars, and our car is like twenty thousand. So when you think about it, like twenty thousand out of forty thousand, that's like fifty percent uh, of that, and that really is going to impact our debt to income ratio. So let's say, like, if it's forty thousand a year, no one has the capacity to just buy twenty thousand um, dollars right off the bat because what we want are looking at when we get financing is our debt to income ratio. So our debt to income ratio is now 50%. We just put on $20,000 in a car payment. Um, and this is not even including how we probably have student loan debt. We probably have credit card debt. We probably have a home mortgage. Like this is just the car. So Jane Marie is like, uh, yeah, $20,000 like in cash is probably not going to happen if she's like making $40,000 hypothetically um, speaking. So now we're looking at, okay, well, waiting costs really can't happen because like we need the car now and I don't have the cash to pay for it. So like most of America, we pay, we finance it with, and we have to be willing to take on the interest. Well, here comes part D. And in reality, D is like the last step, but I really want to challenge you to think of D as the first step. So D is the discipline. Okay, so really before you buy anything, you really need to sit down and think about, do I have the discipline to make the payments on time? Do I have the discipline to make the full balance payment? So remember what I said is the full balance was at 330. The bank is only asking for 150 a month. Well, what happens if I only pay the 150? Well, I have about $150 left that goes into interest. And that interest now becomes the next month's balance, part of the next month's balance. And ultimately we end up with paying interest on interest, which is a really bad idea. Um, because like who wants to pay money to like pay money to borrow money? Like even just like me saying that in my head, I'm like, what, wait, what? Uh, but that's essentially what we all do is like we, pay money on paying money like wh why would anyone want to do that so i'm not saying like so the, again that goes back to credit is not good or bad debt is bad and that's the part where like people get mixed up is you can absolutely finance your car absolutely finance your house like definitely encourage it um as well because that benefits your credit worthiness uh, which we're going to talk about next. So before like you even get to this car, so like if Jane Marie's at the car dealership, the bank wants to know like, 
does she have the discipline basically so and that's why it's like d is kind of that last step in a way but because that's the last thing the banks really care about is like do you have the discipline to just pay the minimum payment like we don't care if you pay more than that because we're happy if you don't well you want to be be smarter than the bank right because who wants somebody else telling you like how to run with your money like hell no i don't want the bank telling me to what to do with my money right like i that, that's like really dumb like don't tell me how to like control my money i want to be in control so i have to have the discipline i get to be in control of the money and basically to be in control of our money we get to understand the four c's of credit and i really would like to add, add this to like the five c's because i think control should be one of them <laughs> but it's not so the bank really doesn't overly care whether or not you're going to pay more than an uh, amount but i think you should like <laughs> definitely add control here um no one wants the bank controlling your money just like the bank is not in the business to take your car away from you um because they're gonna be like what the hell do i do with your shiny new minivan now if you don't make your payments uh but basically what you need to realize is the bank or whoever the lender is is looking at are you credit worthy do you have the capital to pay for the car so jay and marie your capital aspect here is can you cover the minimum payment? So let's say it's $150. Can you also like cover interest? Because we want to eventually get our money, right? So they're kind of looking at like, do you have that capital in there? How much money do you have in your checking and savings account right now? So big mistake that I see oftentimes is, um, and I see this a lot with first time home buyers. So really great example here is, uh, most of us want to buy first time home, homes and the biggest mistake that you can do when you are going through the loan process of buying a home is also going and putting things like uh washer and dryer and refrigerator really big uh, purchases on a credit card because what that is doing is impacting your credit worthiness so if you are putting that additional you now are saying like the to the lender well, wait a second how are you going to pay your monthly mortgage when you also have to pay the minimum balance for that refrigerator for that washer dryer um i don't know what else, a mattress maybe all of that so like people think of financing that and where they really get hooked on um i also want to caution you is you might hear the advertisements on the radio oh zero percent like financing for 18 months Okay, yeah, but within like when the 18 months are up, you're really hit with a large interest payment. So keep that in mind. Inter like 0% financing is great. That means you're like not making a payment right now. Like it sounds great. In reality, the interest is still accruing. So just be very cautious of that um, because that's all impacting your credit worthiness um especially right now i know we've talked about like people having student loan debts and defer and deferment because of covid um and whatever so um uh, <laughs> funny oh my gosh you just like <laughs> merrily i'm so glad you just jumped in right on the walking naked <laughs> comment um so yes yeah, so walking naked um okay so i will tie that into credit worthiness it will be really funny here um basically i don't want you to walk naked in public you got to put clothes on. I really don't want you to walk naked when you're making a big purchase. We get to be the shrewd buyer and we get to understand um, what's going in. So like, do you have the capacity in your budget? So if you like walking naked is like blindly walking in and be like, here's my credit card, put it on that. Don't do that. Oh my God. <laughs> like <laughs> you have to make sure that you have the capacity within the budget um, to do that. And that's where I really come in is I sit down with you and look at the budget. Like, can you afford that car? Can you afford these big purchases? And that's what happens, especially like I was saying, people buy their refrigerators or their washer dryers. Well, that's great. Like you absolutely, you need that for your home, but don't do it during the time period where you're like trying to close on your home because that's what happens. Um, yeah, the 0% now, um, absolutely. Like it's, yes, it's a deferred payment. It's not a deferred interest. Um, yeah, so spot on, Marilee, that's definitely something we 
um, need to be cautious of as well. Um, and then looking at our characters. So integrity is a big one uh, for creditors. They want to know like you're going to pay them back, right? So to bring it back to like my pencil example, well, I kind of am not really smart when I lend out pencils to kids because think about how many middle school, high school kids don't bring their pencils back. Well, um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I would say it's my own damn fault because <laughs> Um, I guess, and, and, and not to be like stereotypical, but yeah, stereotypical wise, like on average, most of the kids are not going to bring the pencils back. Um, and at the same time, I really don't want your snotty pencil back too. Like how many people do you see like who put the pencils in their mouth? Like that's gross. Um, why do you think we got COVID in the first place? So, um, starting in the fall kids, guess what? I'm not loaning you out pencils anymore. <laughs> Because I don't want the back. So, but that's beside the point. Like, I don't, so you get to bring your own pencil. Otherwise, we've got a problem. Um, or I'm going to start charging. Because if I could charge a dollar or a quarter, whatever, and earn interest, essentially, because I'm like, oh, you're not going to bring your pencil back and nor do I want it back, <laughs> kind of thing. So, because again, like, think about it as a bank. Me as a teacher, am I in the business to, like, make a profit off of giving kids pencils? Like, yeah, no. Um, huge flower on the top yeah that's a really okay that's a really good point why do you think they do that <laughs> and they wrap them with like the fun um flowers or the like ropes to their pen exactly the same reason they don't want you taking their pens um it, and it's funny because like you know like when you go to like career fairs and whatever like all they're always like giving pens and my mom makes it a competition she's like Peter, you really need to go pick up all the free pens and pencils because guess what? The kids in your classroom are not going to bring them back and you can get them this like a shitty pencil or pen. Because you all know like when you go to career fairs or any type of fair, like it's really not like high fancy like pencils and pens. Like they bought them in bulk. Um, that's the thing that you should be loaning out. <laughs> so um, yeah, attach a rope to the scissors at your house. That's a good one. I uh, Always losing the scissors or um, Hole punch. That's the other one. Like hole punch, I don't ever get back. Um, stapler is a big one, especially like in math. Stapling your papers, I'm like, where is the stapler? Um, so I have a new rule where the stapler gets to hide in my desk drawer and you have to come to me <laughs> to use the stapler. Um, so absolutely, because we want it back. We don't want to be in debt. Kids like are like, ooh, don't be in debt. Like, ooh, like I don't want to pay for to use that because like, for example, I said to the kids yesterday in middle school, I was like, so if I started charging a quarter to borrow a pencil, how many of you would pay the quarter? And, like, none of the hands went up. They were all like, yeah, I'm absolutely going to bring my own pencil. And I also want to use a mecha mechanical pencil or a clicky pen or whatever. And I'm like, well, I'm not made of money here as a teacher because I'm not in the business to be making money off of pencils and pens. <laughs> Uh, if I was, I probably would be rich, uh, but that's, like, not why I'm a, a teacher, so I'm, like, yeah, like, I'm not here to make a quarter off of you, but at the same time, you don't bring back your uh, money, so it's the same thing, like, bringing it back to, like, the car, well, the lender wants to know that Jan Marie is going to pay her car payment every month, and most of us don't, that's how we trash our credit score, that's, and that's how we like trash our ability to be lending because basically it's so much easier to maintain a good credit score or a good credit history than to fix one you've totally trashed. So for example, um, people who file for bankruptcy, you just trash your credit score by 200 points. It takes seven to 10 years to increase a credit score by 100 points. So you can quickly, quickly drop it by filing to bankruptcy. And then it's probably gonna take about 20 years to get it back to where it was. Like, that's going to take forever, right? Especially if you just filed for bankruptcy and you're, like, already in a position of, how am I going to get out of this, right? So that's, and, and that's oftentimes what I see people coming to me for financial advice and coaching is, like, I don't have ability, because think about it. I mean, if you are trashing your credit score and not paying on time, you're definitely not going to be able to do rent. Like, the landlord is going to be like, um... They're going to look at your four C's and be like, yeah, character, I don't know about this. Uh, capacity, like, 
is that really in the budget? I don't know. Like, because we all want to get our money back. And it's the same thing, like loaning pencils or whatever. Like, I'm like, I want the pencils back because I need to have enough for the next class period. Um, that is not going to be responsible and bring their own essentially. And what, and it is the same thing. It's this responsibility aspect of we get to be responsible with our money to really avoid the debt trap because in reality, none of you should be in debt because we get to spend in our means. We get to be smarties. So bring it back to the like candy bar madness. We want to be smarties. Nobody wants a jawbreaker. And I gave this analogy also to the kids yesterday of think about smarties. So how many like smarties come in little like wrapper and can you buy a single like wrapper of smarties? No, I mean, if you can like, let me know, but I have never seen like a single smarties like in a store, just like, I don't know, sitting there next to the cash register or whatever. Uh, I have on a dum dum and I have on a jawbreaker. So like lollipops, you can get a single lollipop. You can get a single jawbreaker. For example. Well, why do you think that is? Because those people aren't going to be able to share. They're like, they're barely there surviving. So versus a smarty, it, think of it as like, you have all the means to like, oh, I want to buy the car. I want to buy, um, I don't know, the refrigerator, the home. Like you have like multiple of these. Um, Oh, you used to get, wait, you used, Marilee, you used to be able to get, like, single Smarties at 7-Eleven? That's really interesting. Uh, there's, like, not, so there's really not 7-Elevens here in Houston. Uh, I know they're, like, they're big in San Diego, um, Dallas. My cousin loves them, actually, in Dallas. Um, loves the big Slurpees or whatever. Uh, but think about it, like, I, you don't want to, I mean, he loves the big Slurpees. Like, you don't want to get in debt over the big Slurpees. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, well, actually, I think they're only a dollar, <laughs> but a dollar's too run up, by the way. So I always joke with people, like, how many of us do not pick up our pennies off, like, the street or whatever? I'm like, yeah, they're gross, but, like, they do eventually add up and could help yourself <laughs> with your debt payments if you really add them up. Like, because you think about, like, the dads with, like, the coin jars or moms, too. Um, it was always, like, fun to roll them. And that was basically my allowance growing up is, like, oh, well, you can roll it up and take it to the bank kind of thing. Um, so anyway, that is kind of the story on basically just be a shrewd borrower, be smart with your money, no, sincere need or want, uh, be disciplined. Do you have the room in your budget? Um, if you have no idea if you have the room in the budget, that's all the more reason to come join me at Master Your Money Academy. Uh, it's a really great opportunity because I am being generous right now. I am offering a buy one, get one, and that extends uh, or ends on June 30th. So you can get two months of coaching with me, uh, or I'm sorry, three months, pay for two um, at $74 and you get your third free. Um, I also am doing the same offer for group coaching. So um, if you're interested in that, definitely let me know in the comments, um, shoot me a message. Um, that ends June 30th. Uh, this is the end of the quarter and I don't want to see anybody uh, in the situation of, oh my gosh, how do I make my interest payments? How do I make my debt payments um because we get to be the a shrewd borrower we get to be smart about our money we get to have all the smarties in the world um and when you think about it like sugar rush sweet like who doesn't want a sugar rush but and it's like having a money rush uh the way i look at it or if you're like me i love m m's so uh, absolutely what a deal yeah merrily it is a deal like what a deal like oh my gosh like this is totally valued at like $500 and I'm giving it to you at $74 like a month and you get a month free. Yeah, that's a deal because your third quarter of the year is going to be like 95% accuracy budget. Um, we get to get rid of your debt, pay the um, either debt snowball or debt avalanche or maybe a mix of it. Um, I usually prefer the debt snowball. Um, and you can join um, back on, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. I talked about that if you're interested what that means. Um, but yeah, absolutely. What a deal. I'm generous. So you get to hop on and we get to be a shrewd borrower and totally break down your credit, help you improve your credit score. Absolutely. Um, so we'd love to love to um, sit down with you if you're interested. Um, definitely let me know in the comments. We can hop on a um, vision call and um, talk about your vision and your um, goals for financial freedom, whether that be paying off debt or saving, investing, et cetera. Um, extends to you, but again, today is June 26th, so you have till June 
30th at midnight central time to hop on this great deal with me. Um, so anyway, happy Financial Freedom Friday. I know this was a longer um, episode, but I just love talking about um, avoiding the debt trap because I don't think anyone should be in debt. Um, we get to be financial free. So um, I hope you will join me to master your money. So thanks so much for tuning in on Financial Freedom Friday. Um, also happy Pride Month uh, as this kind of wraps up five years ago today. So want to recognize that as well. And I can't believe that next Friday when I join you, it's going to be July already. So again, like that's less than a week to jump on this really great deal. So I hope to see you because, oh my God, like it, next, next weekend, I think it's July 4th. Um, it's crazy. It's like the weeks just fly, fly on by. Uh, so I will be back next Friday, obviously. Um, Wealth Wednesday is always in Mastery Money Academy group, not on the page. Um, so you do have to join the group as well. And um, I highly encourage it because um, I have lots of great things coming up. And uh, definitely starting in September, the group is going to go private. Uh, so to be really um, honed in on coaching. So if you want that coaching, now is the time to definitely hop in to Master Your Money Academy group before it closes down. It's a private group. Um, obviously, everyone who's already in it will get the benefit of being in it. And then after that, um, It'll only be only accepting people who are clients um, because we get to do awesome coaching um, coming up in September one-on-one, -on -one, definitely enhancing the programs. So get in on that opportunity as well. So lots of um, great opportunities going on in Master Your Money Academy. And again, I'm Peter Myers, your host of Master Your Money Academy. And I hope you have a great rest of your June. And if I can be of service um, and would love to work with you, definitely reach out um, as well. So have a happy, happy Friday and have a great weekend. I'll chat with you all later. Bye.